the 25th flash, this treatise consists of 25 remedies. It was written as a salve, a solace, and a prescription for the sick, and in order to visit them and wish them a speedy recovery. First remedy unhappy sick person. Do not be anxious, have patience. Your illness is not a malady for you, it is a sort of cure. For life departs like capital. If it yields no fruits, it is wasted, and if it passes in ease and heedlessness, it passes swiftly. Illness makes that capital of yours yield huge profits. Moreover, it does not allow your life to pass quickly, it restrains it and lengthens it, so that it will depart after yielding its fruits. An indication that your life is lengthened through illness is the following much repeated proverb The times of calamity are long, the times of happiness, most brief. Second remedy O oh, ill person who lacks patience. Be patient, indeed, offer thanks. Your illness may transform each of the minutes of your life into the equivalent of an hour's worship. For worship is of two kinds. One is positive like the well-known worship of supplication and the five daily prayers. The other are negative forms of worship like illness and calamities. By means of these, those afflicted realize their impotence and weakness. They beseech their all-compassionate Creator and take refuge in Him. They manifest worship which is sincere and without hypocrisy. Yes, there is a sound narration stating that a life passed in illness is counted as worship for the believer, on condition he does not complain about God. Carrot it is even established by sound narrations and by those who uncover the realities of creation that one minute's illness of some people who are completely patient and thankful becomes the equivalent of an hour's worship and a minute's illness of certain perfected men the equivalent of a day's worship. So you should not complain about an illness which as though transforms one minute of your life into a thousand minutes and gains for you long life, you should offer thanks. Third remedy impatient sick person. The fact that those who come to this world continuously depart, and the young grow old, and man perpetually revolves amid death and separation testifies that he did not come to this world to enjoy himself and receive pleasure. Moreover, while man is the most perfect, the most elevated, of living beings and the best endowed in regard to members and faculties, he dwells on past pleasures and future pains, and so passes a grievous, troublesome life, lower than the animals. This means that man did not come to this world to live in a fine manner and pass his life in ease and pleasure. Rather, he possesses vast capital, and he came here to work and do trade for an eternal, everlasting life. The capital given to man is his lifetime. Had there been no illness, good health and well-being would have caused heedlessness, for they show the world to be pleasant and make the hereafter forgotten. They do not want death and the grave to be thought of, they cause the capital of life to be wasted on trifles. Whereas illness suddenly opens the eyes, it says to the body, you are not immortal. You have not been left to your own devices. You have a duty. Give up your pride. Think of the one who created you. Know that you will enter the grave, so prepare yourself for it. From this point of view, illness is an admonishing guide and advisor that never deceives. It should not be complained about in this respect indeed, should be thanked for. And if it is not too severe, patience should be sought to endure it. Fourth remedy plaintive ill person. You have no right to complain. What is due to you is to offer thanks and be patient. For your body and members and faculties are not your property. You did not make them, nor did you did buy them from other workshops. That means they are someone else's property, and their owner has disposal over his property as he wishes. As is related in the 26th word, an extremely wealthy and skillful craftsman, for example, employs a poor man as a model in order to show off his fine art and considerable wealth. In return for a wage, for a brief hour he clothes the poor man in a bejeweled and skillfully wrought garment. He works it on him and gives it various states. In order to display the extraordinary varieties of his art, he cuts the garment, alters it, and lengthens and shortens it. Does the poor wage earner have the right to say to that person, you are causing me trouble, you are causing me distress with the form you have given it, making me bow down and stand up? Has he the right to tell him that he is spoiling his fine appearance by trimming and shortening the garment which makes him beautiful? Can he tell him he is being unkind and unfair? O oh, sick person, 
just like in this comparison, in order to display the garment of your body with which he has clothed you, bejeweled with luminous faculties like the eye, the ear, the reason, and the heart, and the embroideries of his most beautiful names, the all-glorious maker makes you revolve amid numerous states and changes you in many situations. Just as you learn of his name of provider through hunger, so come to know his name of healer through your illness. Since suffering and calamities show the decrees of some of his names, many instances of good are to be found within those flashes of wisdom and rays of mercy. If the veil of illness, which you fear and loathe, were to be lifted, behind it you would find many agreeable and beautiful meanings. Fifth remedy you who is afflicted with illness. Through experience, I have formed the opinion at this time that for some people sickness is a divine bounty, a gift of the most merciful. Although I was not worthy of it, over the past eight or nine years a number of young people have come to me in connection with their illnesses, to request my prayers. I have noticed that all of them have begun to think of the hereafter more than other young people. They lack the drunkenness of youth, and have renounced to an extent animal desires and heedlessness. So I consider them and then remind them that their illnesses are a divine bounty within bearable limits. I tell them, brother, I am not opposed to this illness of yours. I don't feel sorry for you because of it that I should pray for you. Try to be patient until the illness awakens you completely, and once it has performed its duty, the compassionate Creator will restore you to health, God willing. One also tell them, owing to the calamity of good health, some of your fellows become neglectful, give up the five daily prayers, do not think of the grave, and forget God Almighty. The superficial pleasure of a brief hour's worldly life causes them to shake and damage eternal life, and even to destroy it. Whereas because of your illness, you see the grave, which you will in any event enter, and the dwellings of the hereafter beyond it, and you act accordingly. So for you, illness is good health, while for some of your peers good health is a sickness. Sixth remedy O oh sick person who complains about his suffering. I say to you, think of your past life and remember the pleasurable, happy days and the distressing, troublesome times, and you will surely exclaim either, oh, or, ah. That is, your heart and tongue will either say, all praise and thanks be to God, or, alas and alack. Note carefully, what makes you exclaim, praise and thanks be to God, is thinking of the pains and calamities that have befallen you, they induce a sort of pleasure so that your heart offers thanks, for the passing of pain as a pleasure. With the passing of pains and calamities, a legacy of pleasure is left in the spirit, which on being aroused by thinking, pours forth from the spirit in thanks. What makes you exclaim, alas and alack, are the pleasurable and happy times you have experienced in the past, which with their passing leave a legacy in your spirit of constant pain. Whenever you think of them, the pain is again stimulated, causing regret and sorrow to pour forth. Since one day's illicit pleasure sometimes causes a year's suffering in the spirit, and with the pain of a fleeting day's illness causes many days' pleasure and recompense in addition to the pleasure at being relieved at its passing, think of the result of this temporary illness with which you are now afflicted, and of the merits of its inner face. Say, all is from God. This too will pass, and offer thanks instead of complaining. 